trusts his father dear, and who delights to feel his presence still, just like a child whose mind has no doubt, and whose heart is never proud. Here I come, oh Lord, here I come just like a child. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, the liturgy of this Sunday will give us a deeper insight into God's ways, how God goes about doing things. Human beings have one way of doing things and God's ways may seem a little weird, a little different at times. The Gospel today will further help us reflect on how God works and what is God's sense of mercy and God's sense of love. Today during this Eucharist, we'll pray. We'll pray for ourselves We'll pray for others that we may try and understand how God wants us to work in our lives and how God himself works through his ways in all our lives. And as we prepare to enter into this Eucharist, we ask for pardon, pardon for all the sins that we might have committed times when we have not allowed the love, the mercy of God to flow in and through us. And for all these times and moments, we ask the Lord for pardon. And we say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Son of man, Jesus. 
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord, he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Let our response be, The Lord is close to all who call Him. The Lord is close to all who call Him. I will bless your day after day and praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is great and highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. Your response, The Lord is close to all who call Him. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures, your response. The Lord is close to all who call him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him who call on him in truth. Your response, the Lord is close to all who call him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines. Brethren, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. And so they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us? We have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Justice, yes, but mercy and grace supersede justice. In order to understand the meaning behind the parable we encounter in today's gospel, that is Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16, we need to take a closer look at the context in which this parable comes. Chapter 19 ends with this phrase, but many who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. But while the parable of the workers in the vineyard ends with this phrase, so the last will be first and the first will be last. These similar phrases almost function as bookends to mark the beginning and the end of today's parable. In chapter 19, we encounter the rich young man who found it very difficult to give up on his possessions. Peter, the leader of the apostles and their mouthpiece most of the time, observing this exchange between the young man and Jesus, notes that the disciples have already given everything and are now following Jesus. What will be their reward? And Jesus answers very magnanimously and tells them that each of the 12 apostles 
will be judges and will sit on the throne of judgment of the 12 tribes of Israel. But then there is a rider. Rewards will not be limited only to the 12. This in no way diminishes the rewards that the 12 would get, but it extends rewards to other deserving people as well. This might have come as a surprise to the twelve to hear that others, others who come later than them, others whom they think are unworthy, will receive the same reward as the apostles. The parable that we heard in today's gospel is anticlimactic. The workers who were picked up from the marketplace at the last round of recruitment are the ones who were paid first and each of them pick up a denarius that is a day's wage and others who are noticing that these last those who were hired at the 11th hour are paid a denarius it was like a bonus wage the others who came earlier were expecting a higher wage a higher bonus each of the ones who were hired early in the morning, they end up getting the same exact wage, that is a denarius each, a day's wage. These begin grumbling as they thought that since they had come early in the morning, since they had borne the scorching heat, that they would be rewarded even more since the others received a bonus. The master was gracious enough to explain to them and to tell them that no wrong was done to them. What was promised was delivered to them. But then what the master does with his money is beyond the purview of these laborers. The landowner is very gracious. He calls these grumbling friends and then he could have called them ungrateful. He could have called them, you wretched souls. I had promised you certain amount of wage and I gave you, but yet you are grumbling. But the master is gracious. He calls them friends. He has shown grace, not only to the late comers, but even to these who came early in the morning and are grumbling at this moment. This is exactly a reflection of a Heavenly Father who is not only merciful to sinners but also merciful to those who do good works in the kingdom and sometimes this tendency to grumble does come about in any of them. They were promised a fair wage and each of them received exactly that, nothing less. The landowner has not cheated or taken advantage of them, but has paid them fully in accordance with the agreement. The landowner's generosity to the latecomers has not taken a penny out of their pockets or denied them anything. There is no harsh judgment here. There is only grace. The landowner is very gracious as he does not even punish the workers who come early for complaining but acknowledges that they too deserve a just wage and that is what he gives them. They are free to take it and leave but they are not free to dictate what the landowner will do with the rest of his own money. If he chooses to be especially generous to the 11th hour workers, he will do so. And that is exactly what he does. With the parable of the workers in the vineyard, Jesus spells out how the heavenly reward system might look like. At face value, it may seem as though Jesus, as though the owner of the vineyard, are trampling upon values of equality, of justice, 
but indeed there is no abuse of justice. There is just abundance of mercy, there is abundance of grace. And grace and mercy have no set of defined rules. There are no regulations, there are no yardsticks. There is just generous outpouring of mercy and grace. This parable that we heard in today's gospel is very similar to the parable of the prodigal son. In both these parables, the grace shown to the undeserving person offend those who think of themselves as deserving. However, we are glad for the mercy shown to the prodigal son and are offended by the elder brother's outrage. Not so with the parable of the workers in the vineyard. We more easily share their offense. We more easily get hurt thinking that these guys have toiled so hard and they get the same wage as someone who came at the 11th hour. They have worked long hours, they have worked hard, but the master puts them on par with the least and the rest of the workers. God could put each one of us on par with latecomers to the faith, with others who have done less or given less and we ought to be satisfied and content with what God rewards us with. We shouldn't grumble like these other workers who though might have come early, but each of them receives a just wage. We may think that others are less deserving. We may think that others need to be rewarded less because they seem to be doing less or they seem to profess their faith in a less edifying way. But God's system, God's ways of rewarding us is different. And it may seem a little unjust, but it is not unjust. It's just mercy and grace. The problem with us human beings is that we don't want to be on par with anyone else. We want to be on top. We do not want mercy. That is what God gives us freely. But we want justice. We want to have what we have earned. If God distributes rewards fairly, we who have worked all day, we who are so faithful with our faith would think that those who come later, those who do less must be rewarded to a less degree. We should receive what we have earned, what we deserve, plus a generous bonus. The irony is, of course, that this little bit that we have earned or think that we deserve is of very little consequence as compared to God's grace and God's mercy. If God gave us what we truly deserved, God only would know if we would ever enter the heavenly gates. We are better off with mercy and grace than with justice. Justice, yes, but grace and mercy supersede justice. Let us all profess our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and was seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We'll offer up a few of our prayers and intentions that we have at this Eucharist. Let your response be, Lord, show us your mercy. Lord, show, show us your mercy. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy and the religious, that they may use the Church's resources for the spiritual as well as the material needs of the people, we pray. Lord, show us your mercy. For the working class, that they may use their energy with cheerfulness and generosity, so that work does not become a burden, but a duty towards the well-being of humanity, we pray. Lord, show us your mercy. That adequate security may be provided to workers, such as those who work in dangerous occupations, involving high risks, so that human lives are not lost, we pray. Lord, show us your mercy that child and bonded labor may not be practiced in any part of the world, we pray. Lord, show us your mercy. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that enlightened by the word of God, we may remove selfishness from our minds, thereby letting God's grace flow into us, we pray. Lord, show us your mercy. We'll pause for a while and pray for all those suffering, suffering in this world due to the pandemic and all those affected by it. We'll also offer up all those prayers that lie within our hearts. Heavenly Father, listen to the prayers of your children, those that were expressed in words, and all those little prayers that we have made in the silence of our hearts, and grant them to us if it is your will. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created human beings, and when they were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed them through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Neri, our Bishop, 
and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With trust and confidence in our Heavenly Father, we call out to Him in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles and who today says to each one of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who teaches us justice, yes, but mercy and grace supersede justice. Blessed are all of us who have got an insight into God's ways and are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. You only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for Spiritual Communion At thy feet, O my Jesus, I prostrate myself, and I offer thee repentance of my contrite heart, which is humbled in its nothingness and in thy holy presence. I adore thee in the sacrament of thy love. I desire to receive thee into the poor dwelling that my heart offers thee, while waiting for the happiness of sacramental communion, I wish to possess thee in spirit. Come to me, O my Jesus, since I, for my part, am coming to thee. May thy love embrace my whole being in life and in death. I believe in thee, I hope in thee, I love thee. Amen.
pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the love, the peace, and the joy of Christ. You are with me in my days of gloom.